So another way in which psychology went bad in the 21st century was the Stanford Prison Experiment, conducted by Dr. Philip Zimbardo in 1971, so just a decade after the Milgram Obedience Experiment. And many of you have probably heard of this experiment. There have been quite a number of movies made, um, including one just this past year. Um, the video that I have up in our course for you to watch is uh, footage from the actual um, experiment in 1971. Um, so what was it? It was a study of the psychological effects of becoming a prisoner or a guard. So they wanted to take a look at what happens to people when they are um, either put in captivity or in charge of others who are in captivity. The study was funded by the United States Office of Naval Research and was of um, great interest to both the U.S. Navy and the Marine Corps as an investigation into the causes of conflict between military guards and prisoners. So you can already see some similarities between this and the Milgram experiment. What will people do in a position of authority? So what it was was 24 male students were selected out of 75 applicants to take on randomly assigned roles. So some were guards and some were prisoners. It was an even split. One of the surprises was how very easily the participants adapted to their roles and they adapted well beyond their expectations. So um, at first, you know, the first eight, ten hours, it was kind of a joke, it was a game, you know, da da da. But then, you know, people's needs were beginning to be impacted. Food was being withheld. Um, the ability to um, go to the bathroom, to shower, to brush your teeth, to um, have light, to have a mattress. Um, things like this began to happen and the guards took on increasingly sadistic tendencies and the prisoners took on increasingly rebellious tendencies. Um, the guards used all manner of authoritarian uh, measures and psychological torture. They were allowed to do anything except physically touch the prisoners. Um, so they really went all out. They were not directed to do anything. They came up with things to do all on their own. Um, Many prisoners passively accepted the psychological abuse um, as well as harassed other prisoners who attempted to prevent it. So the prisoners were um, in survival mode and so that group began to turn against itself whereas the guards were more unified. They had a, they had a single goal and they had the power. They had the control to do what they wanted. Um, one of the the biggest, biggest, biggest challenges and ethical problems with this experiment was how it affected Dr. Zimbardo. He should not have been a participant in this experiment and he has written extensively about this and about the mistakes that he made um, conducting this experiment. He has, um, he's still uh, practicing, he's still doing, um, contributing a lot to the field. Um, he assigned himself the role as superintendent of the prison. And it didn't take very long for him to get pretty involved as well in how to keep the prisoners in line. And he should have had the detached observer role. He should have been able to stop the experiment before it took the turn that it took. Um, but he was not able to do that because he did not have the objectivity necessary. He was too enmeshed in his own experiment. Um, so he learned a lot by this mistake and because he made this mistake, other researchers who followed have learned a lot from, from that. Um, so what was he really trying to do? Um, the hypothesis was um, do inherent personality traits, so something inside you already um, of prisoners and guards contribute to the chief cause of abusive behavior in prison. And the conclusion was that the results were more situational than dispositional. So dispositional means internal, internal characteristics, so caused by um, something that's inside of you. Um, the behavior that the prisoners and the guards exhibited were the result of the situation they were placed in, the context they were placed in, rather than something that was more deeply inside of them. Um, so lots of criticism of this experiment. It emotionally traumatized the prisoners, I mean, like crazy. Um, it, was, it was a very brutal experiment, um, you know, even without any physical contact between guards and prisoners. Um, a third of the guards demonstrated sadistic tendencies, um, and these were all these 24 men who were chosen 
um, were all, you know, quote unquote, normal, you know, kids. Um, they were not uh, torturing animals in their spare time. You know, they were about as normal as you could get. Um, and a third of them demonstrated sadistic tendencies when put in this context. Um, Dr. Zimbardo did not keep the traditional scientific controls um, and he was unable to remain a neutral observer. So that's what I was talking about earlier. He was unable to remain detached and watch and maintain control over his experiment. It ran away with him. Um, the conclusions were subjective and anecdotal um, and the experiment is of course extremely difficult to reproduce because there were so many ethical issues we cannot uh, conduct such an experiment again. Um, the experiment was stopped after six days instead of the two weeks it was planned um, because of the extreme human suffering. And it took um, a graduate student, a, a female graduate student who happened to be dating Dr. Zimbardo um, and did go on uh, to become his wife, who came to visit and was like, hey, you got to knock this out. Like something is not, this is not okay. And, and she sort of snapped him out of kind of the spell that he had fallen under as well. Um, so this was Christina Mosslock, um, who was this grad student um, who saw the conditions of the prison. She was the only one of 50 people who visited the prison um, and saw the experiment and the conditions who objected to it and questioned its morality. Um, as you can see, there are comparisons to be made between this and the Milgram obedience experiment. Um, it's worth noting the participants did sign a consent form um, they were simply in the basement of the psychology building on uh, Stanford campus, but for all intents and purposes, they were in the darkest of the dark holes in the ground. Um, the argument is that they could not have known what they were consenting to. Um, the study was, however, approved by the Stanford Human Subjects Review Committee prior to initiating the study. And in 1973, two years after the experiment, the APA, which is the American Psychological Association, reviewed the ethics again and found it did meet with the existing ethical guidelines, many of which have since been changed as a result of this experiment. Um, in the book, uh, Dr. Zimbardo has written many books on um, the nature of, of evil, darkness in men, um, humans, not just men, darkness in humans. Um, and in this particular book called The Lucifer Effect, um, he was writing about his role in this experiment, and he says, quote, I was guilty of the sin of omission, the evil of inaction, of not providing adequate oversight and surveillance when it was required, and the findings came at the expense of human suffering. I am sorry for that, and to this day apologize for contributing to this inhumanity. So he didn't go on and say, oh, yeah, it was fine, all in the name of science, yay, yay, nobody got really hurt, blah, blah. As soon as he really realized what was happening, he owned it. He stood up. Um, he stood up and he, he took responsibility. Um, the, uh, some of the insights and the observations from the Stanford prison experiment gave us some significant insight into the behavior of the American soldiers um, in the Abu Ghraib prison in Iraq um, a few years back. Um, so you can see how this is still a relevant thing to explore and to, and to look at. We just need to find um, ethical ways of doing So go ahead and take a look at the video in the course on the Stanford Prison Experiment. And um, remember to take the quiz. This one's worth 20 points um, on Stanford Prison Experiment and the Milgram Obedience Test.